Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Wagid's math class. Today we will be talking about a new concept, which is volume. And a volume is the measurement of how much space a three-dimensional object takes up or the capacity of an object. So today's lesson is about finding the volume of a three-dimensional object. So what is 3D in math? Three-dimensional in math are called solids or solid shapes which are objects that you can fill. For example, of the solid shapes are rectangular prism, cylinder, cone, cube, pyramid, and a sphere. So you can fill these objects and find the measurement of the volume. So to find the volume of an object is to find how much of a substance can you fill a solid. For example, how much soup does this container have and it's in a rectangular prism or maybe how much coffee can you fill this cup with and it's in the shape of a cylinder or maybe how much hairspray does this bottle have and it's in the shape of a cylinder so today's lesson is to find the volume of a cylinder let's start with something simple like finding the volume of a rectangular prism it's called a rectangular prism because the bottom is in the shape of a rectangle if I wanted to find the volume of this rectangular prism, that means how much can I fill this container or this solid with? And watch how I need to fill the bottom layer first, which is the base. And the base is in the shape of a rectangle. And then if I wanted to fill it all the way to the top, That would be the volume of the whole shape. To find the volume, which means to find the measurement of how much of space can you fill this solid with, is to find the area of the base, multiply it by the height gives you that volume. So let's try this. Here's an example. To find the volume of this rectangular prism, first of all, find the area of the base, then multiply it by the height. Since it's the base is a rectangle, then it's the area of the base would be length time width. Then multiply it by the height will give you the volume. For example, if you have a length of three centimeter, width of two centimeter, and a height of five centimeter, all you have to do is substitute those numbers in the equation. Three times two times five, which gives you 30 centimeter cubed, always the measurement of a volume, the label will always be cubed because it's three dimensional. Now let's move to another solid, which is cylinder. How can you find the volume of the cylinder? Now watch the cylinder base is actually a circle. So you have to fill the base first. And the base in this case is a circle. To find the area of the circle, is pi times the radius squared. But if I want to fill it to the top, then I need to multiply the height. So it's the area of the base times the height, but it happened that this cylinder has a base of a circle. So the volume of the cylinder is B time h, where b is the area of the base and h is the height of the cylinder. So the area of the base, since it's a circle, to find the area of the circle, it's pi r squared. Then multiply it by h, which is the height. This is the equation to find the volume of a cylinder. Now let's talk about the radius. Always the radius is part of a circle and the radius is the distance from the middle of the circle to the rim of that circle. And we call it R. The height, which is H, always make a 90 degree angle with the base. Now, let's say that the radius is three inches and the height is 6.2 inches. Find the volume of that cylinder. Substitute the numbers in the equation. 
V equals pi is always 3.14 times the radius. The radius is 3, but you need to square it times the height, which is 6.2 inches. Bring the volume down. Now, first of all, you'll evaluate squaring. So 3 squared is 9. Then bring the 3.14 down times the height, which is 6.2. Multiply all these numbers. You get 175.212. I need to round this to the radius 10th place. Look at the 10th place, which is 2. Now, I need to decide, does it stay the same or does it go up? Look at the number after that, which is the 100th place. Since it's less than 5, then the 10th place stays the same. Therefore, approximately 175.2 cubic inches. Now, how can you find the height of the cylinder and round your answer to the radius 10th place? Here's an example. The first thing to do is to write the equation. Since it's in the shape of a cylinder, then the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared times the height. Now let's look at the information they gave us. First of all, I need the radius. The radius always is part of a circle. Did they give you the radius or the diameter that is eight centimeter? I really want you to see this. Always the diameter is the distance from one rim crossing the center to the other rim of the circle. That's called the diameter, it's all the way through. Radius would be half of that, which means only from the center to one side of the circle or to the, to the rim of the circle. And it doesn't matter whether it's this way or this way or this way. The radius is the same from the center to any point on the circle. So the radius would be half of the diameter, which is 4 centimeters. Did they give me the height? No, so I keep it as h. Did they give me the volume? Yes, which is 176 cubic centimeter. Now substitute those numbers in the equation. The volume is 176, pi is 3.14, r is 4, but I need to square it, times the height, I don't know what it is, so leave it as h. Now simplify using order of operations, so you have to square the radius first. Bring the 176 down, bring the 3.14 down, and 4 squared is 16 and bring the height down. Now multiply 3.14 times 16 and bring everything else down. So 176 equals 50.24 times the height. I need to isolate or solve for h, so divide both sides by 50.24. You end up with the height equal 3.503. Round to the nearest tenth. Again, look at the tenth place, which is the 5. Now, do I keep it the same or do I make it 6? Look at the hundredth place. Since it's less than 5, then it stays the same. So your answer is 3.5 centimeter, and that is the height. Now let's find the radius of a cylinder. Here's an example. They've given you the height and they've given you the volume. And I know they gave me the height because it doesn't matter whether you hold your cylinder vertically or horizontally. Always the radius is part of a circle. Don't forget that. Radius is part of a circle, and it's the distance from the middle of the circle to the rim. So the first thing to do is to write the equation v equals pi r squared times the height. Now write the information they gave you. The radius, I don't know what it is, so give it a question mark, or write it as r. The height is 76 centimeter, and the volume approximately. 600,000 cubic centimeter. Now substitute the numbers in the equation. The volume is 600,000. Pi is 3.14. The radius, I don't know what it is, so I'm going to leave it as r squared times the height, which is 76. Now again, simplify using order of operations. So you need to multiply 3.14 times 76, which is 238.76. Bring the r squared, the equal sign down, and the 600,000 down. Now I need to solve for r, so divide both sides but by 238.76 because it's on the same side as the radius that I'm trying to find. You end up with 2,512.98 
equals r squared. Now, I don't want r squared, I want r. So what's the inverse operation of exponent? It's radical. So square root both sides, you end up with the square root of 2,512.98 is almost 50.129 equals squaring the square root, they cancel each other, you bring the r down. Now I need to round it to the nearest whole number, which means, I don't want to see a decimal, 50.129, look at the ones place, which is a zero. Now do I need to bring it up or keep it the same? Since the tenth place is one, then it stays the same. So the radius approximately 50 centimeters. Now let's find the volume of the hairspray in this bottle. Keep your answer with pi. So I don't want you to replace pi with 3.14, so I want the answer to stay with pi. Here's an example with the measurement. Let's say the height, and you know this is the height because it's not part of a circle, is 11 inches. And I know the cap is two inches. And then I know this is a diameter because it's part of a circle, which is one from one rim to the other passing the center. So that's a diameter, not a radius. I need half of that for a radius. So half of three is 1.5. So I know the radius equals 1.5 inches. Now the height, let's talk about the height. The height all the way from the top to the bottom is 11 inches. But think again, does the cap contain any hairspray? It doesn't, so I need to subtract this cap from the height of the hairspray. So you end up with nine inches because 11 minus two is nine. So the height is nine inches and the volume is what I'm trying to find. So first of all, write the equation, v equal pi r squared times the height and then substitute the numbers. Remember, I do not want to substitute pi with 3.14 because I want the answer to stay with pi. So keep pi the way it is, but the radius is 1.5 squared times 9 is the height. Now bring the v down, simplify by bringing pi down, multiply 1.5 times 1.5, which is 2.25, then bring the 9, which is the height, down. Again, multiply 2.25 times 9, which gives you 20.25. Bring the pi down, so don't multiply by 3.14. So the volume is 20.25 pi inch cubed. Here's the last example for today's lesson. How much coffee can I fill this cup with? But here's what's tricky about this question, that the cup has two different circles. The base circle is smaller than the top circle. That means the amount of coffee in the bottom is not gonna be the same as the top. So what do you do? Let's take the measurement first. If I measure the diameter of the top circle, that gives you nine. Now let's find the measurement of the bottom circle, and that gives you five. And the height is gonna be 11. Now let's find the volume of this cup. Since you have two different circles, I would find the average of the area of both circles. To find the average of the areas of both circles, let's find the area of the top circle first. Substitute the numbers in the area equation, a equal pi r squared, pi is 3.14. Now I need the radius, not the diameter. So if the diameter is nine, halfway would be 4.5, so the radius is 4.5, but I need to square it. So now 4.5 times 4.5 times 3.14, gives you the area of 63.59. Now let's find the area of the smaller circle. Again, I don't need the diameter, I need halfway, so the radius will be 2.5. So substitute the numbers, pi is 3.14, and the radius is 2.5 squared. Now multiplying 2.5 times 2.5 times 3.14 gives you the area of 19.63. Average means add the areas and divide them by and you get 41.61. Now substitute the numbers in the equation of the volume, in the volumes equation, V equal area of the base times the height. The area I'll be using is 41.61 times the height, which is 11. 
multiply them, you get approximately 457.7. So today we were able to find the volume of a cylinder using the equation V equal the area of the base times the height, which is V equals pi r squared times the height because the area is a circle. We were also able to find the missing dimension of a cylinder, whether it was the height or the radius. Keep in mind, the volume is the amount of substance in an object. So if the cap does not have hairspray, don't add that to the height. And if you have a cylinder with two different bases, take the average area of both bases to find the volume. That's it for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and liking my videos. If you have any question, I'll be happy to answer it. Just write it in the comments below. See you next time.